Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. And guys, I just tweeted out this. The S&P is pumping again. Bitcoin could follow next. Keep a close eye on it. Guys, if you were checking out the charts, you would have most likely also seen for yourself that the SMP was actually going pretty damn wild throughout the last couple of hours of trading. All right, you can see right here, it went on a pretty big rise. You can see that Bitcoin is not necessarily going on a one-to-one, -one, but generally speaking, going into the same direction. And that's why I said, guys, prepare yourself for some crazy long positions as right now, it's not confirmed. We shouldn't be opening a long just quite yet, but you can see on the Bitcoin chart at the bottom here, we are getting so close. We're getting so close, which once more, guys, is why you should check the link down below for Bybit. That's the exchange which we're trading on right now. And you should already know when we're going to open for ourselves another Bitcoin position. But I guess to quickly tell you all, once we get above $40,000 again, it is go time. It is game time. And as long as we're below that, it is actually still time for shorts, which is rather interesting because it sounds so vague, but as long as we don't cross the $40,000 mark, we should still have our short position open on Bitcoin to make ourselves a good hedge. And once we get above it, we can basically switch it over to potentially catch that pump as well. But that's a little bit of a side note. Let's quickly dive into some crypto news, should we? Russia. Russian government owns 12% of all global crypto holdings. $200 billion. By Bloomberg. Now, this is a very interesting announcement. And to be honest with you, I'm not a thousand percent sure what to actually say about this. A lot of people are saying it comes because of crypto mining as they've let go a couple of statements around it. But this is rather a very interesting piece. I mean, I, I'm already kind of annoyed, I guess, that Blockworks doesn't just post a full article with more details. However, it was mostly disturbing because of the contrast. I've posted a couple of times over on Twitter that right now, there's a little bit of a battle going on between two specific countries that should not be mentioned. However, funny enough, Bitcoin Archive posted this. Ukraine is going all in on becoming the world's premier crypto superpower by Fortune magazine. I don't want to say too much, but what's happening over the last week is this. We have seen Russia all of a sudden do a 180 because the central bank or whatever wanted to ban it. Putin and a couple others were like, no, 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 we, we want to we wanna go with it. Boom. Next day, U.S. is like, ah, eh, we're pretty cool on it. You know what? Bitcoin, it's, it's a freaking national security. Next week, we got to report it. Then we get even more severe pressure from Russia in, in, in terms of how heavy they are on crypto. We also get India to legalize it. We get a couple of states in the U.S. to try and legalize it. We get a couple other countries stating that they really want to go quicker with the whole process. But then again, Ukraine also saying they want to become the superpower in that. The UK saying they want to become the superpower in that. It's getting scary up in here, guys. And when I say it's getting scary up in here, it's a good thing because competition is healthy. And so since Dubai right now would say is the crypto hub, partially, it still depends on how you view it, might be one of the other countries in the future. It's going to be interesting to see how these guys are going to position themselves as none of them want to lose this race, right? And I believe Ukraine is doing this for a strategic position, basically, to basically better themselves. They're going to have a lot of support of their crypto hub uh, and, and, you know, Russia. Yeah, let's not go too deep into that one. Hopefully you understand it. Um, but I think it's a rather interesting predicament that we're in over the last couple of weeks and how things have basically changed. It's, it's such a drastic change as well. Now, a little bit of negative news, of course. you got to have some negative Nancys in there every now and then. Uh, but before we get into that, guys, if you are enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button. A lot of y'all were saying you like the ledger giveaway, so I have three options, I guess. All right, option number one is I go ask Bybit to make sure that a couple of you all that are using the link down below for Bybit, if you haven't checked it out, link down below, and give, let's say, 10 of y'all a ledger for absolutely free for just having an account and made one trade. Then we'll just pick one person who just makes an account right now. Uh, 10 person, I guess. Option number two is I contact Ledger and ask them if I can give some away, which I think might be possible, right? But I'm not sure how many. Option three is we stick to what I was planning to do, which is just I give it out of my own pocket here to somebody in the comment section if we hit like 2,000 likes. Um, yeah, I guess all three are an option. I could also just keep giving. But I just need to know, are you guys interested in Ledger giveaways? If yes, Make sure you put it down below, guys. And I can actually try to get, maybe can even get like 30 or so. So I can hopefully make some people happy with that. 
I, I was under the impression that most people had one already. If you don't, you can either buy one down below or put it down below. And I'm going to try to make sure that we can give... I'm going to try to get 30 or so, but I'm going to get at least 10 to give away this week. All right, so just put it down below then. And I got to see a couple of hands, you know, I got to see some people excited. Otherwise, I'm not going to go through the trouble. All right, but apparently the U.S. SEC has delayed a decision on the Bitwise Bitcoin Spot ETF. Once more, guys, they say it's for all these different purposes of Tether not being certain, yada, yada, yada. A couple of times it's been denied, and I guess a delay is the same thing as it being denied. It just prevents them from reapplying, which would have been a bigger headline, I guess. Um, but at the end of the day, reapplying or it being delayed is basically the same thing, if you ask me. I, I guess they just don't have to pay as much maybe to file for it. Again, I'm not even sure how much they have to pay for it. Then I want to dive a little bit into the story that we talked about earlier. I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper into it, as I said before. So it was actually a really interesting conversation. All right, let's quickly scroll up here. There was Ripple I who said, Ethereum is a hybrid of MasterCoin and Ripple. This is so amazing to me. He's a genius, I heard, but can't come up with an original idea. IOHK seemed to Joel Katz did, but the egghead 2000 IQ scumbag had to steal it. This is Bitcoin 2014 in Miami. So it's uh it's it's this hybrid of of master coin of the master coin and ripple model and the pure bit. I think Bitcoin maybe. So Greenwood said Justin Sun, or no, it's this is actually not Justin Sun. This is Stephen Thomas. You know, you can understand why I, I mix them up sometimes, Justin Sun and, and uh, Stephen Thomas. Stephen Thomas from Ripple and now from Coil. I, uh, he used to be the CTO of Ripple, I believe, before he stepped down and focused mostly his efforts on Coil, which is also funded by Ripple, by the way, and Interledger. Open source developer and distributed systems advocate, co-creator of Interledger, founder and CEO of Coil. Uh, him and Vitalik got the idea from Ripple while he was an intern. Now, I'm kind of confused exactly how that's supposed to work in terms of Stephen Thomas here. I thought maybe he would have thought about uh, Vit, uh, uh, Joe Lubin, but he, he's tagged Stephen Thomas. I'm not exactly sure what the connections are there, but again, I'm guys, I'm not the perfect guy to ask for it because in the system, it talks about Stephen, which is why I'm like, hmm. So apparently those guys got the idea from Ripple while he was an intern. Vitalik was an intern over at Ripple. But uh, Justin Sun, I believe, also worked for Ripple before. He was, I believe, also an intern. So that's why I was like, oh, whatever. ETHGATE makes me wonder if the ETH technology is intellectual property of Ripple. Why? Well, at the end of his blog post on Codius, former Ripple CTO Stephen Thomas winds up a writing, here's to smart contracts that aren't terrible. Smart contracts have been around for a few years and are synonymous with the Ethereum platform. He says that one of his significant assignments at Ripple was to design its smart contract ecosystem system. However, Ripple with their smart contract applications in the back burner while Vitalik went on to incorporate them in the Ethereum data structure. Stefan, however, states that Vitalik got the idea from Ripple. Thanks to the smart contract system, Ethereum attracted blockchain's major developers to its platform and has been a standout developer platform since then. He says that Ripple did make the mistake of underestimating just how much smart contracts would revolutionize the DApp developer space. And that's understandable, guys, because you got to remember, this is years ago we're talking about when the majority of people didn't even know that bitcoin existed which again has gone rather quickly even over the last five years uh before when i used to ask my friends about it nobody knew nobody understood nobody or some per people might have heard about it from the dark web right now it's like this big investment thing things have changed drastically but if i were to ask somebody about a d app nobody would know right nobody would know even the idea of nfts has been there for a very long time but it's only since 2021 that people really start to, oh, NFT, yeah, like it's become a household name. Where before it was like a really deeper layer of knowledge and not as hyped up and fraudulent. Um, but I digress. So he, he went on to say, just throwing it out there, most don't know that Vitalik was an internet Ripple and started Ethereum right after he left. And Stefan Thomas said he got the idea from Ripple. Now you know and you can make your own conclusions. So that's when um, David Sports came in and Charles Hoskinson. So Charles is on the side of, you have no brain, or I'm not exactly sure why that is the case, because David Swartz says he's right about that. A lot of us felt that payments, particularly international payments, were badly broken and that blockchain tech could drastically improve them. Honestly, I'm still somewhat puzzled why that strategy hasn't been more successful more quickly than it was. Like, So this is David Swartz, the current CTO of Ripple, and the reason that this is so critical, relevant, and the whole nine yards is because Ripple basically at the get-go had the idea for what Ethereum is doing now. 
they decided to not go for it. They decided to go a different vertical, different strategy, because they thought that would be more severe, uh, more needed, better for the world, so to speak, uh, have more beneficial value. Ended up being, quote unquote, wrong in the sense that the Ripple, uh, I'm going to say, and XRP did really well for a long time. Yet, if we're looking at the adoption now, Ethereum is, of course, layers ahead. And it could be because of some pressure on top of Ripple. Yada, yada. We can talk about that for a little bit. Uh, but it could also just been because, well, even though the, the area that Ripple is fixing is severe and it's in some ways more necessary than what ETH is doing, it's for the people a lot easier to see where ETH comes in because there's developer access pretty simply. With Ripple, it's like, okay, if you're a developer, what do you do now? You're going to work on some, yeah, but what? You're going to work on something that can help with integrating the payments and whatnot. But it's it's a deeper level of knowledge potentially that would be necessary. Or at least uh, you need a broader vision to actually implement some of the XRP ledger and just, I guess, Ripple tech from a couple years ago perspective than with ETH. It's like, hmm, let's meme about. Let's do some fun stuff. It's a lot easier. There's a lesser, um, like, in Dutch is drempel. Like, a, I don't know, like a bump for, I don't know the English word for it, guys. I'm not a native English speaker. Uh, bump, whatever in the road, there's less of a bump to get into the ETH market, I guess, as a developer than for Ripple, even though in terms of how you structure things and whatnot, I don't think it's necessarily, um, I think ETH might even be crazier in that sense. I'm just talking about how as a developer, there was more appeal and the DApp sector was just way more appreciated than they would have expected. And that's a kind of fun contrast. Uh, then again, not exactly sure why Charles says the, the brains part, because I, I do see this as my own truth as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I do see it as the truth. Um, then again, what David Swartz mostly refers to here is about the fact that Ripple could have done it, not necessarily that, that Vitaly got his idea from them. But I mean, if you read the story like this, it does make a lot of sense that he did. So I'm not really going to argue that. I'm just going to assume that it's the truth. There was another question that I saw. Wendy Rogers said, every time I say Bitcoin, why do people keep saying XRP? And what is it? So it's kind of fun because Wendy here, uh, as the Arizona state senator, who is, this is actually pretty critical, by the way, she has brought up the point to get a crypto bill in Arizona right now to make a legal tender, right? So we are all happy with her. So her asking about XRP, of course, is a very big step as well. Now, obviously, the more that she knows about the lawsuit, the more of a chance we have that she's going to do something about it or intervene or try to put something up. However, Matt said this, Matt Hamilton from Ripple X. XRP is another crypto. It was created in 2011 by some Bitcoin developers to be a better Bitcoin in response to the growing energy requirements of Bitcoin. XRP lives on the XP Ledger, a public permissionless decentralized blockchain. And you can read more over on the XP Ledger.org. Raconteur said, by definition, XP is not a crypto, nor is it decentralized. Outright lie. And again, Matt Hamilton said, here is a formal definition of a cryptocurrency. Which part of this definition do you agree with? And then there's, of course, what a cryptocurrency uh, would, would be. And let's see if they had a response as well. Hmm, let's quickly check that out, actually. Maybe it's not loading for some reason. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen this multiple different times. Many people hate on the XP Ledger, by the way, for it being centralized and whatnot. There's a couple of discussions that you can make, but decentralization in the essence is definitely a, a questionable point uh, of discussion in the sense that it depends on what you really consider decentralized to what degree. Um, because do you consider Solana decentralized? Right? Do you consider the Binance Smart Chain decentralized? It just depends on how you see it, right? I mean, a lot of us call Binance Smart Chain and everything on there basically DCFI, which is basically decentralized, centralized finance. But the same thing goes for Solana in some degree, and the same thing goes for quite a lot of projects out there nowadays. So it just depends on how far you want to kind of draw that. Um, and with the XP Ledger, again, it has unique properties that some others don't. It's not a you know, traditional proof of work model, but that does not necessarily make it centralized. It just depends on your definition of that. If you're talking about it needs to have, you know, at least 15,000 different nodes, so to speak, or different points of contact, or maybe even you want at least 100,000 different people to interact with it. Yeah, I mean, does that necessarily make it more secure? Though? I mean, it makes it potentially more decentralized, not necessarily better of a system or more secure. There's a lot of definitions which come into, or a lot of uh, variables that come into play in that sense. So it's not, uh, by definition, also true. But that's again, I, I, I keep digressing a little bit because there's just so much to talk about in that sense about uh, decentralization and, and whatnot. And yeah, I, I guess I should even now wait to cover this one. It was the meaning of we at the ACC. We already briefly talked about this and touched upon this over in our uh, previous episode. So I'm going to kind of keep it for here. We're just going to mostly focus on the whole idea that ETH kind of came 
after Ripple and they had the idea. And, and this one, I guess we can also... Oh, we did we did this one already as well, right? Absolute proof the SEC never believed it could prove XP today as a security. You got to remember, guys, the SEC is trying to face a battle that they cannot win. I told you guys this a thousand times before. I am not a legal advisor. I am not a financial advisor. But with the research that I've done, that I think a lot of you guys have replicated and seen me do, it is going to be so difficult for the SEC to win on the grounds that XRP right now is still being sold as an investment contract. It's also going to be really hard for SEC to prove a couple of things in that little uh, frame. But it mostly comes back down to if they really thought so, and if they really thought they could prove that in court, they would have gone for what is called a preliminary injunction, meaning that as of this point, every single sale of XRP should be halted until a judgment is made, which the judge could have then said yes or no to, uh, because it would every time be an illegal sale. Yet the fact that they didn't go for that and they're not trying to do that leads me to believe my conclusion that I've drawn a couple of months ago, more than a year ago already, I think, is still correct. What I've said to you guys when the lawsuit came in is this. There's a win condition for both sides, and I've described this yesterday as well. The SEC's win condition is they want to either see some money or officially be recognized as the winner of the lawsuit. Ripple's win condition is XRP from that point on forward is officially not a security. And I think, honestly, that's the bottom layer for both sides. And there are a lot of different worlds in which both of those can be met. If Ripple, for example, acknowledges that, okay, at the get-go, let's say the first five years, whatever, pick a, pick a number, it was a security. So we're going to pay $59 million in fines for that. You've won the SEC. But after that, it was properly decentralized as the judge and we all conclude. Yeah, I think, I think both of those guys are are on the right path towards the future because both of those win conditions basically are met. And that's again what you got to remember. It's not always about one or the other winning, right? Because there's multiple different points on which you can win. And at the end of the day, the SEC sued Ripple. If they can get something out of that, they've officially won the case, right? But it also depends on whether or not the judge is going to decide or if they go for a settlement. We'll have to see though. We can't, we can't, we can speculate, but it's no real use. We'll have to wait and see. But let me just tell you guys once more. If Ripple really loses this, I'm losing my mind and we're going to do some crazy stuff, right? We're just going to walk around the street uh, butt naked and um, dance because, uh, you know, it's crazy time then at that point, right? We're going to act a little bit crazy in that sense as well. I'm going to go uh, do, some, uh, do some crazy dances on, uh, on outside and maybe, maybe, maybe not do that actually. Maybe just stay inside and, you know, be sad or something like that. Like that. But you guys get my drift, you know? It, it would be really odd. And a lot of you guys are saying, you know, the government always wins refer back to what I just said about it. Right. So that was it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe and I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today, amigos.